Most people assume that defining and administering the laws are the primary reason for the creation of the state. If we read only the political philosophers, we would think that providing these services have always been a function of the state. But if we look into the history of law, we find that systems of law were developed and administered privately long before it ever occurred to the state to become involved in this business. In England, for hundreds of years, the monarchy coexisted with private law and had no interest in the law. The international law merchant in English common law was originally developed and administered privately. When the English government got involved late in the Anglo-Saxon era, it was not because the private legal system wasn't working, it was because the king realized he could raise money through the king's court. The state began to dominate the industry. It wasn't until 1729 that the British government got involved in the criminal investigation and prosecution business. The government added authoritarian criminal law to the privately established civil law and changed the customary emphasis on restitution into a system of punishments that included fines, mutilation, execution, transportation of felons to distant colonies, and so on. In 1829, the London Police Department was established, and by 1856, police departments were established in every county. So we cannot accept a definition of the state that is contrary to history. The British state existed as a war-making and taxing organization, while law-making and law enforcement remain private enterprises. One cannot include the services of law-making and law enforcement in our definition of the state. Even legislation, whether they have elected legislative bodies or not, all states use their power to command their subjects to behave in certain ways. This might not be regarded by all the subjects as a service, but it must be regarded as a service to the rulers. So, one of the ends of the state is to allow rulers to rule. Now, the state has provided many services at different times and in different places, from military services, judicial and penal systems, mail delivery, public education, mobilizing disaster relief, building highways, canals, aqueducts, dams, monuments, parks, pyramids, and spaceships. But not one of these services is essential to the definition of the state. So if all these miscellaneous services frequently associated with the state are not essential to the idea of the state, then no particular service is essential to the definition of the state. The people who create and control the state must have motives for doing what they do. But there are no predefined motives. The state can be established for anything. It can be established for the glory of God. All we can say about the services provided by the state is that they are services desired by those who create and control that state. The motives of the rulers can vary from all angles of life. The only end common to all states is to allow the rulers to rule. Let's look at the difference between the way the state operates and the way private organizations operate. Let's compare the state with private enterprise with respect to how they finance their operations, how they cope with competition, and how their agents treat people. States have used a variety of methods to finance their operations, but the primary method of state financing is taxation. Taxation is imposed on taxpayers by brute force, whether they approve of the state's activities or not. If private individuals or private organizations collected money in this manner without a special grant of privilege from the state, they'd be regarded as thieves. So taxation is a distinguishing characteristic of the state, which must be included in the definition of the state. E chi su è un vigilante mio? Eh, vedi sapere che vostro paragno di 600 scudi politici. Io ve lo domando solo rucendo per la protezione che mi rogni e lo scordo pure la malattia. Ma se no i spiriti ti vengono a casa e tu e tutto da famiglia che avete disonorati. 600 dollari. Chi ne succede se non pagano? Tu le canusci alla messi soi. Veramente bestia, perciò fai chiari da stucco a te e gli ungiuto che alleggi. E per chi la mo' pagare? Perciò per chi c'è la mandare a vinto a non si sia dato monete? Tu non capisci, chi so e non so quartieri. So what is a criminal organization that rules the people within a specific geographic area by imposing taxes on them and by using brute force to require all individuals and all organizations within its domain to obey its commands? The state establishes political borders and imposes its rule on people who live within those borders. It copes with other organizations within its geographic area by either outlawing them or by regulating them and setting limits on their activities. The state enforces mandates within its borders by initiating or threatening to initiate violence. 
a private individual or private organization that attempts to obtain a ruling monopoly in this way would be regarded as a criminal. So this unique way of the state establishing borders and treating competitors inside those borders distinguishes it from private enterprise. This should be included in the definition of the state. Private enterprises provide specific services for specific clients for specific prices. The clients are free to buy these services from other competing companies or not buy them at all. Clients pay only for the services they hire. The state provides its services to whoever it chooses and it forces the taxpayer to cover the cost. Look at the way private businesses treat clients and the way the state treats its subjects. Consider the difference between private and government courts. In private courts, the parties can freely choose to be bound by the decision of the arbitrator, and all the testimony and all the other evidence is voluntarily presented. In U.S. federal courts, the government, number one, requires defendants to appear in court, number two, impanels juries by threatening them with fines and imprisonment for contempt of court, number three, subpoenas witnesses to testify, and number four, enforces the decisions of its judges and juries without regard to the consent of the defendants. If a private individual or private organization not acting on behalf of the state were to use any of these coercive procedures, they'd be recognized as criminals. So the definitive methods used by the state that distinguish it from private businesses are number one, taxation, and number two, coercion, the use of brute force to establish and maintain a monopoly of rulership within its self-proclaimed geographic domain. The state is the most powerful organization in its geographic area. It commands and uses more resources than any other organization, and it's no coincidence to find highly placed people all throughout history and country after country using the state to amass personal wealth. So we know that the state controls a geographic area by using the political means. Particular states may differ from each other in the services they provide, but they all operate by using the political means. So what is the state? The state is nothing more than a criminal organization which manages an extortion racket behind a veil of legitimacy. It lives for the control of territory, the masking of the ruling class, the exploitation of its people, and the extension of its own existence. The state is a uniform political system being coercively imposed on all of its citizens. We do not have the right to ignore the state, we do not have the right to discard its services, and we do not have the right to refuse to pay for its support and protection. However, we do have the right to be free from invasion, but at the end of the day, the state overrides our personal rights, allowing the state to take our property against our will by forcing us to pay taxes.